Welcome to the webinar. This is my summary of the webinar that Sarah and I did on headaches. I'm just going to go ahead and load it up and I hope you enjoy uh, this webinar on headaches. So if we... So we're going to talk about headaches uh, today and the headache topic is a huge, huge topic. So we're going to keep it focused on the ones that you can really help yourself with. And the benefit of that is you can actually help the other ones or, or help reduce the symptoms of all the other headaches with these tips on the ones that you can mainly do it for. And I'll explain that a bit as we go through. So what we're going to cover really is how common are headaches? They, I mean, they are extraordinarily common and so much money is spent on them. We'll talk about the main causes, then the ones to watch out for, and then really what you can do to help yourself. Um, and then there was a Q&A at the end of this, so we might touch on a couple of questions that maybe came up in that topic. So headaches, extraordinary amount of issues that they cause to the health service. 10 million people in the UK are said to suffer with headaches and migraines. And if you look at the numbers on your screen there, 250 million pounds is spent on headache sufferers every year. 250 million pounds of the NHS money, the taxpayers' money, is spent on headaches each year. And there's going to be a couple of things I'm going to show you through this webinar that you can do to help yourself. And if everybody took that on board, just think how much we could reduce the stress on the health service by with just a couple of little things yourself. But the greater cost is significant. It's estimated that £4.4 billion a year is a loss to the economy because of headache related sickness or people who are present at work, but not necessarily focused on the work in hand. So it's a big, big issue. And within that issue comes a huge variety of different headaches. But let's just focus on some of the most common causes of them, the most common types of headaches. And here you have a list. You've got tension type headaches. That's a tension that we feel around that sort of temporals around our head. Migraines that can come with or without aura. That's the ones that tend to last 24 hours. You have to put yourself to bed. Some people might get flashing lights. Some people even get paralysis of one side of the body. Um, so migraines with themselves have a huge variety of symptoms. Cluster headaches are some of the nastiest ones going. These are really um, severe headaches that come for a short periods of time. Go, go, come, go, come, go. And then cervicogenic. And these are probably the most common. And that's headaches that stem from the neck wrapping up around the head and giving us those headaches. And then sinus problems, pain in our front of our face and in our sinuses can have a big effect on headaches too. But we're really going to focus mainly on the tension and cervicogenic headaches in this talk. And as I said, if we can improve the tension within our neck, the tension within our head, it may not fix some of the other headaches that there are, which is, I think it's something like 124 different variants of headaches. It's going to reduce their symptoms. So it's going to benefit you regardless of what type of headache that you're suffering with. Before we move on, it would be redress me not to mention the serious causes of headaches because headaches can have serious effects. So if any of these symptoms are present for yourself, I would strongly urge you to get yourself checked quickly uh, by the right healthcare professional. Certainly if you have a sudden severe pain, the worst pain ever, like a brick hitting the back of your head or a brick hitting your head, that really should warrant a trip to A&E uh, to get that checked out. Pain worse in the morning accompanied by vomiting can be a sign of a serious underlying headache. So very important that you seek your GP's advice on that. And if you get any change in your vision, taste or smell that happen rapidly with your headache, uh, then again, that's a trip to A&E. So any of those symptoms that you're suffering with, make sure that you get yourself checked. And if you are in doubt, check it out. So what are the most common causes? Issues with the muscles and joints of the neck really are the main cause of headaches. They, they refer up from the base of the head, neck, they wrap up into the head and give us those nasty headaches. Changes in blood vessel dilation and constriction is also another major cause. So Things like monitoring our blood pressure and how healthy our body is and our fitness level can have a massive impact on the health of our head and our migraines. So important that we are doing stuff to look after the neck, the joints and nerves of the neck, um, because they are the ones that really refer into the head. 
So then it begs the question, what can you do? And there's three simple things that you can really work on to improve your headaches. Strengthening, improving your posture and the motion of your neck, which we'll go into. Reducing blood pressure changes. So keeping your body fit and healthy consistently. And also monitoring dietary influence. There's a great saying that says you can't medicate your way out of something that you behaved your way into. You can't medicate your way out of something that you behaved your way into. And a lot of headaches are really behavior, poor posture, poor sitting position for years, uh, poor nutritional choices, poor exercise habits. These can all lead to those headaches. So you can't medicate something for which you behaved your way into. Um, let's think how we can change our behavior to really fix those. So the first one's dietary. And those headache sufferers who have a headache trigger, who have a nutritional trigger, they know it. Uh, whether it's caffeine, sweeteners, alcohol, or chocolate, some very common causes of those dietary influenced headaches, they know the triggers. But why don't we do? Why don't we stop it? Why do we keep persisting? And if you think of pain as a warning sign, pain is a is a problem. Yes, it's annoying, but it's not the problem. It's the warning sign. Just like the fire alarm going off, it's warning you that there's something else happening. So if we're getting pain, ask yourself why. And it's not necessarily just because you're having the bad food, but maybe it's your body's way of saying this bad food's really damaging me on the inside and therefore I should do something about it. But the main one that underpins all of these is dehydration. Dehydration being the biggest cause. And what's really interesting is the West, in the, in the Western world, the, really the biggest precursor to all chronic disease is dehydration. Yet we spend money sending over to the east to help people get hot, to, to get clean water. Yet we're not drinking it ourselves. And I think sometimes we need to check ourselves on that one because there's no excuse. So you really need to be having at least two liters of water a day, at least two liters of water a day um, to get your hydration levels up. And remember, that's going to hydrate the issues of the neck to really help improve the susceptibility to those cervicogenic or tension type headaches. We then have a look at blood pressure influences and, and that change in rapid change in blood pressure can give headaches and that vessel dilation constriction. It really comes down to our overall well-being and our general physical health. Are we looking after our physical health on a daily basis? Are we exercising daily? And it should be daily. Now, that could be a 10 minute walk every day or it could be going to the gym every day, but we should be doing some form of exercise every single day. Again, with that comes the hydration, but also breath work is a really great way of helping control our blood vessel constriction and dilation. What breath work does is it takes us from this sympathetic, this stress response, always on the go, high blood pressure, narrow blood vessel diameter, which can be sort of the precursor to your migraines. One of the most powerful things you can do is breath work, which pulls you back into parasympathetic, your body's rest and digest, that healing response. So this is quite simple. The easiest way to do breath work is box breathing. Now, the way we do box breathing is we think of four areas of the breath cycle. You breathe in, you hold, you breathe out, and you hold. Breathe in, hold, out, hold. Four parts of the breath cycle. Those four parts will make four edges of a square, therefore your box and your box breathing. What you want to do is you want to do four seconds for each one of those parts. So you breathe in slowly for four seconds. You hold your breath for four seconds. You breathe out slowly for four seconds. And you hold your breath again for four seconds. And you repeat this circular motion of breathing over and over again. And that will pull your body into parasympathetic, helping dilate those blood vessels, helping to reduce the pressure in the blood system. <clears throat> and then the main one, really, the main cause of headaches is from the neck, what we call cervicogenic. The cervical spine is your neck. Cervicogenic headaches, the main cause of headaches. Three areas to focus on when we're looking after the health of our neck is the alignment, 
its flexibility and its strength. Its alignment, its flexibility and its strength. Now the neck should have, from if we looked at your body from the side, your neck should have a nice smooth curvature in it, a nice smooth curve. The curve helps absorb shock in the head and keeps it nice and spongy and relaxed. So one thing that you can do is you can take yourself a tea towel, not a tea towel, a bath towel, roll that bath towel up into a cylinder and place that cylinder behind the back of your neck. And you place it behind the back of your neck and your head should curve over onto it. You'll see in our YouTube channel, there'll be an exercise on there for helping you with that neck curve um, towel exercise. So you can look that up through our YouTube channel too. But a nice rolled up towel about this big, placed behind the back of the neck and you simply lie on the floor, allow your head to fall over it. And that will encourage the curvature back into the neck, that alignment that we really want. Once you've got the alignment, you want good flexibility in that neck. So the example of the picture here is the stretch that you can do to increase flexibility in the neck. You place one hand and brace it down by your side. You take your other hand over the top of your head and you gently pull your head away. You feel the stretch come on down the neck. Be mindful not to let the shoulder rise and just keep following your body over, but to keep one hand placed on your side hand over the top and pull away. And you'll feel the stretch, just like that person showing on the screen, down through your neck. And doing that on a regular basis will improve the flexibility. You then have the strength. So we want to build strength in our neck. Now this one is tricky. And again, there'll be videos on the uh, YouTube channel where you can look up how to do this exercise exactly. But what this involves is lying on the floor on a flat surface, and tucking your chin in towards your chest and holding it there. You're not lifting your head off the floor. You're keeping your head flat on the floor and gently tucking your chin in towards your chest. If you tuck too hard or you force your chin in, you'll use the big muscles of your neck. So it should just be a very gentle tuck of the chin, hold for a few seconds and relax. And this is engaging what we call the deep neck flexors. The deep neck flexors, those which support and brace the neck right on the inside. So simple, lie on a rolled up towel, head over the back of it 10 minutes, just let it relax. Do a few stretches holding for 10 seconds each side of that neck. And then do a few exercises where you tuck your chin in. And this will improve the alignment, the flexibility and the strength of your neck to reduce the likelihood of that referral up to your head. And then the only thing that chiropractic would add on top of that is if the alignment is out and not just from a change in curve, if it's more specific than that, then that's where you might need a chiropractor to relocate or help adjust those joints. Because if they are out of place and not moving right and causing pinch or interference on the nerve, that can certainly give you a headache. So what we would suggest is you try all the things that we've shown you in here and yes, they're simple, but do them over a long enough period of time to really get some change, and that should help. But if it doesn't, then maybe consult your chiropractor and see how we may be of help. So I hope that brief introduction to headaches has really helped you. It is simple stuff, but it's consistency of good habit that will really help you. And as I said, if you're in doubt, check it out. And if you think that we can help you further, give us a shout. Good luck.